There it is. <laughs> hey, sorry, we were having a little bit of a hard time there with the clicker there. He thought he could do it, and I couldn't. So oh, we got it up now. Yes. So this is uh, episode three, and I, um, you guys are very lucky to let me be able to get him out here for three episodes. But it's just been such a good weekend, and I told him I really think he has fed us a as a couple so much that I think would benefit you all. Um, so I want to just jump right in because we're going to need all the time that we can get with this one because this one we have processed most of all this weekend and it came across it was another one of those where he had me kind of like deer eyed because he said um uh, have you ever really thought about this part parable and obviously he's very gifted with money he will be uh, very humble and not tell you that but he is very very gifted with um, being able to be insightful to know what to do how to invest and how to make the most and how to be a steward of what we have. And so with that, we were talking about, we had said in the episode previous, we started with talking about how important it is to line yourself up with God in love. Because if you don't build it in love, it's not gonna happen anyway. And then making a plan and knowing that God holds the ultimate plan, but we make that plan with thinking of the end. What is the end legacy that we want to leave behind? And then we talked about how in getting there, we sit back and look at the different aspects and what we need to do in those different aspects to get there, whether it's personal, educational, spiritual, and financial, and then fa familial, uh, both individual and as a family. And um, so we started talking, and this one parable was the one that he had shared with me, and I was kind of like, wow, wow. So I'm going to turn it over to you, and you can deer eye them. Like well, I don't know about deer me. eyes. We hope not. Oh anyway. dear! Oh dear! Yeah, we hope no deer eyes are happening today. <laughs> but, uh, yes. So uh, we're going to be talking about the parable of ten minus. If you want to turn over to your scripture, which I always recommend looking up scripture, is uh, Luke uh, 19, chapter 19, verse 11, and we'll read the whole thing. It take me a second. Uh, while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country, distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him say, to say, We don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your minus has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another, another servant came and said, Here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I, did you, that I am a hard man taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you put my money on deposit? Didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back I could have collected with interest? Then he said to those standing by, Take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, He has ten already has ten. He replied, I tell you, to every one who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what has he has will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. So. I just caught something. Yes. And this is totally different direction. But one of the things that was dear eyed to me is because this is one of those parables that's like when we started talking, I said to Brian, I said, it's a hard one for me to understand. I don't really get where, I do get what he's saying, but I don't get what he's saying. But did you catch the fact that he 
didn't call himself shrewd. He said, you wicked servant, your own words will condemn you. Because it's how the per servant perceived the master. And then he draws the parallel in the end where he says, those who are enemies of mine who didn't want me to be their king, bring them in and execute them. I see a real big parallel here with that third Maya being those people who they put God in a box and they've identified God as being shrewd and mean. It's God's fault. Why did God do that? Why did, why did, because God does these things to me, I don't want to make him mad. They live their life in a fear of God, an unhealthy fear, not a righteous fear. And so, because they're blaming God. They're blaming God. Yeah. And it's God's enemies that blame him because they don't have that relationship. They don't have that relationship. Whereas the first two, because they were aligned, like we said in the first episode, with God, they knew he would be loving toward mm -hmm. what they did. Yeah. So I just thought of that. I'm just throwing yeah. that in so, as a new Well, yeah, thing. and I mean, what, well, what he said at first, I mean, you go back to verse number uh, 12, or mm -hmm. 13, excuse me. He said he gave them the money, 10 minus, and he said, put them to work. And to put that in perspective, my version identifies 10 minus as 10 pounds of silver. Yeah. So that would be a lot of money yeah. even in today's. Yeah. 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 So a minor was about three months wages. Uh, three mine, months mine wages. Says that. So, uh, so he says, put it to work. Well, so that's his instruction. So that's his instruction. So we know that at least... And we'll go back to this as the end. That seven of them, or he did not talk. He talked only about three, but he gave money to ten. We talked about that today, yes. and I hadn't realized that till Brian had mentioned. So that. basically, from my understanding, eight of the ten were good and faithful. I mean, two of the ten were good and faithful, and eight of the ten did not do the follow the instruction. And only one of those eight brought it back. Well, one of the eight, one of the, yes, one of the eight brought it back, yes. So we were talking, because this is just a throw in too, and this is, no. Brian always enlightens me with different financial things because I didn't catch this parallel until Brian did that for me because he said that, do you realize that, I'm going to say it right, that most of the work in our society is only done. And most of the wealth is in a small period of hands of people. And then you look at this scripture and you can almost... It and the work that. for that wealth yes. is very limited. Yes. yes. So I thought that was interesting. Yes. So um, so it's an interesting concept. You can do a lot of those things about, uh, you know, and I, think, I know we talk about churches. Uh, I hear things all the time that, you know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work, a lot of jobs. They say a lot of that happens. Uh, sales people, you know, like sales companies, you know, they'll they'll tell you the top twenty percent does the majority of the work, and the other eighty just hangs in there. As a so teacher, we know that. that. Yes. As a teacher in your classroom, you realize that you'll, you'll probably only get thirty percent of your students who really go that extra mile and try to get as much as they can out of that lesson. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a whole different perspective. It's interesting how that percentage keeps coming up. Yes. But. What we talk about as a family is, I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm going to be different. Hmm. And uh, I so think. So he married someone different. So I married someone <laughs> different. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but God calls us to be different. He calls us separated people. Mm -hmm. In Peter. We're different. We're separated from the world. We're mm -hmm. holy. Holy is being separated. Yes. That's what holy means. Holy is separation. You are a holy priesthood. Yes. Priests were separated. Yes, priesthood. So in that, I have to ask my first question to myself is, of those ten people, who do I want to be? Hmm. Do I want to be... Your eyes. Do I want to be the one that brings back the one mine and had buried it in the ground and did nothing with it? Do I want to be the other seven who didn't even come back? I don't know if they squandered didn't bring back, someone. didn't squander it, whatever they did. There's nothing here. So evidently they didn't do something good or they would have been mentioned. 
-hmm. So evidently, because whatever they, they did was for it. as bad as the third one, or worse. Mm -hmm. You know, either they just brought back. So what it's was, almost yes. like the lukewarm because they, the one that brought it back, thought he had something to show for it. Yeah. The other seven were like, I don't even have anything to show for it. I'm not even coming yeah, back. Yeah, or did it even come? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I don't know where that is. I yeah. can't say in scripture. I just know that it only talks about three. So you have to assume the other seven that they they Oof. they didn't do any. They they weren't with the other two. That's mm -hmm. that's your assumption that you almost have to take here. So. Uh, but I have to ask myself, where, who, who do I want to be? Well, of course, I don't want to be in that bottom half. I mean, I don't think many people, when they start You're talking, not in the bottom about half say, in the top half. Or no, I said no, saying I don't want to be in the bottom half. You do not want to be. No, yes. I think most people are going to say, well, I don't really want to be in the bottom half. But then the next question would come, right? So what so are you I doing? Th so if I don't want to be in the bottom half, how do I get in that top twenty percent? What do I need to do to get in the top 20%? I marry the most wonderful man in the world. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that is what your thing is, you know, because uh, yeah, uh, uh, God has made me unique, and that's not better than anybody else, but I am unique. So I think everybody else has their, hopefully, each uh, lady out there or her husband has their own most wonderful man or most wonderful wife. Yes, they do. Yes. So uh, that should be for each his own. Yes. I'm uh, sorry. That, I couldn't help but think I know. Yeah, that was sweet. But I have to ask myself the question, I don't, do I want to be, well, who do I want to be? And if I want to be that top 20%, how do I do that? Hmm. How do I do that? It doesn't always have to be finance. Please understand, this can be money. And God talks about money. Please do not be afraid to talk about money. I know people want to look always at the camel going through the eye of a needle for a rich person. But what it is, is the love of money. Mm -hmm. Not money. We all know uh, I can talk to my pastor. Uh, I can talk to many people who come through our church. We have many wonderful ministries come through our church, correct? Yes. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, the wind's blowing and blowing my pages all crooked. Uh, but we have wonderful ministries come through. I, I'm a part of a rotary group, and every week we have wonderful things. And a lot of times we have ministries of some sort or community come needs in. that come in and want us to help. How can we help? Uh, what can we do? We're looking for projects to do as a Rotary Club. Uh, whether it be international, mostly in our community, right? But there's so many needs. Yes. If the money and the time is not there, mm -hmm. how can you meet those needs? In the world of Christians, and I look at uh, Franklin Graham's ministry where he goes around, mm -hmm. uh, Samaritan's Purse, and they go into all these places. It takes money, and I, he has to have people donate to him to take the money and to, to donate food and water and all the supplies they need, the ministry that they have to do to these people. And in this it scripture, it shows you that God is not anti-money. No. As a matter of fact, he rewards stewards yes, stewardship. of money. It's the stewardship of money yes. that God rewards, and he rewards it with more wealth. And he I'll, gives and them, yes. there was something else that Brian pointed out to me today, and I've read this a hundred times, and today he says to me, uh, me puts me on we, the can spot. We, can we move? I'm please. sorry, go ahead. No, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves, because I think my timekeeper is coming up to close. Okay. But I want to finish this thought out okay. before we close up shop on this one, because I think you're trying to talk me into doing some more. I am. Yes, yeah, so uh, not that I want, don't want to do that, but I am getting hungry. Uh, it's way past my dinner time at this point. But he told no, me when plan. we got married, if he could eat and sleep, he would be yes. nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I won't become grumpier in the next two episodes. So I'm playing. The bear and the smokies here. <laughs> but I think the goals that we need to understand are where we want to be, which which wh which side do we want to be on? Do we want to be on the top 20 or do we want to be on the others? And that can be, with, like I said, with finances. It can be with our abilities. Mm -hmm. And in one place it says talents, and I know talents in Hebrew uh, in the Jewish culture was money also. But it could be some gift that he's given us. How do we use that gift? Do we keep mo uh, using that gift for others? Do we keep honing that gift? Do we keep sharpening that tool? Do we c become better? Or do we just want to mm -hmm. be just, okay, well, I'm fine. I can play the guitar okay. I know some people that play the guitar wonderfully. And I can just play it, and I'll just go wing it when I go out. Or am I going to be really, really work hard to 
hone my skills to be the best musician because God's gave me a gift at this. But can I be the best? Can I be one of the best? Can I be really good at what I do? That's the difference between those two. And they were wanting to do something the best they could for him. And we know that they may have or may not have liked him. We know a lot of people were against this king being there. Yes. And the thing is to take a part of that. Even though they may or may not have liked them, that king, they did the best they could for that king. It's funny because even when Brian said to me, have you read the parable of the shrewd manager? Manager. The manager gets the blame for being shrewd. But we can talk. That's and another. That's, that, yes. yeah, we're, we're going a lot of divergence yes. here because yes. I was afraid that this might happen, that this parable has a lot to it. And it seems like a simple parable, but if you really start unpacking it, uh, and sorry, that's a Rabbi Landry. I listen to him. Well, he loves that unpacking word, and, and, <laughs> and I'm taking that from him, so I apologize for that. But <laughs> but as long as, you know, going, there's sometimes too many parts to a problem or a, a issue or what we're trying to, to do to make it in one thing and, and run through it because I don't think that would be given a, uh, a very justice. good service justice to the people that we're talking to because yeah. we've talked about it. We've had quite a bit we of conversation, have. We've so we a understand lot, that a so, lot about this. So we're able to jump around a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think it'd be a good time to stop, and then we can pick up uh, right where I left Before off. Before I stop, can I throw one yeah, thing in? Absolutely. Because I think one of the things Brian shared with you earlier, he loves to read. He mm -hmm. loves to read. He loves to read biographies of successful people and what have made them successful. Yes. And I think it's important here to realize is that they all started as a servant. Yes. We seem to think that to increase our whether it be wealth or increase our talent or well it's because you you had that golden spoon or you had that but there are several people Brian gets excited and then he gets me excited because I love biographies and he's like well did you realize that such and such started um, I'm trying to think when we just watched the timeline of the big names of finances the one that worked for I believe he worked for JP Morgan or it was JP Morgan who worked for one of the very wealthy ones and then oh, no, that moved was, his uh, way up. Oh, my God. Uh, no, that was actually Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie out of Pittsburgh. Carnegie out of Pittsburgh. Yes. He started in the steel industry, and he was a boy on the streets. I think he started at eight years old delivering letters in the mailroom. So, uh, yes, he did, had no golden spoon, and he was very, very poor. So that there, uh, I say that because we try to make excuses. Satan tries to make us make excuses, yes. and we don't. What that excuse is not carry weight. It didn't carry weight with the manager here. No. There was no excuses. No excuses. No. So how would you tie this up in a knot? How would I tie this up in a knot? The first part is, where do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Do you want to imitate in your life the? seven or eight that evidently they didn't even did, have anything did, to show that for it, that did not yes they didn't that got things taken away from them and because god's it. already given yes. you something or do you want none be of a, us are yes. out here with nothing or do you want to be in the top tw two or 20 percent uh, of this which would be two out of ten uh so you have to ask yourself that first question because you can't start anywhere until you answer that first question mm -hmm. sometimes we want to take things uh, at a high level when they need to start out very simply but anyway, I think that's how we would wrap this one up. And I think we need to move on because I can talk about more and we're going to keep making this longer and longer if I keep going. Okay. Okay. All right. You want to end it? Because you're very good at that ending. Yeah, you give that nice little thing that I can't do. I'm not very good at that. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Yeah, they're gonna take we're, yeah. I um I hope that you have taken away from this in the last couple episodes. There's a lot to come in this and a lot more to come in. I'm gonna try to feed him a little bit. No. And well we're gonna no, I don't know about the feed. I wanna get to, yeah, I think I've got some uh, things on my mind so we need to get it out. All right. Then we are going to click pause and start number four. So see you in a minute. <laughs>